My hearty welcome to Mrs. Minimal Purula Jacob Tangal and Dr. Wo Iswari Daru uh, and all uh, all fellow colleague members and all participants from various uh, reputed institutes and all others. Welcome you all and good afternoon to all. For the sixth session will be taken up by Mrs. Uh, Minimal Purula Jacob Tangal on the topic uh, green sustainable solutions for slope stability now i request uh, dr vinay to introduce to read uh, madam's profile thanks sir good morning ma'am uh, i'll share my screen is it clear sir So, good afternoon, all. It uh, gives me an immense pleasure to Hi. introduce. Yes, sir. Slideshow. Yes, sir. It's in slideshow mode only, sir. No, no, it's not. Now, is it visible, sir? Yes. So, sorry for the technical difficulty. Uh, again, I will repeat, uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, it gives me an immense, uh, immense pleasure to introduce a multidimensional personality, Ms. Uh, Minimal Karula. She is the head and uh, she is the head strategic initiative and strategic projects in India, Southeast Asia and Pacific region, McAfee Environmental Solutions Private Limited, Gurugao, India. She did her B.Tech in Civil Engineering and M.Tech in Geotechnical Engineering. Along with that, after, uh, 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 along, uh, after that, she has additionally completed MBA at Indian School of Business. Ms. Minimal is heading the National Standard Committee participation and institutional collaboration of McAfee Group in Indian subcontinent. Presently, her strategic leading role is extended to Southeast Asian countries, including Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Japan, Hong Kong, Thailand, Australia, and New Zealand. Prior to Mukaferi, ma'am has worked in Kerala Irrigation Department and associated with LSGD Kerala and RIT Government Engineering College, OTM. The ma'am possesses more than 25 years' experience in introducing and educating on new technology, steel, polymetric and bioengineering materials in various application fields for infrastructural development of civil engineering. Ma'am got unique opportunities to get involved in challenging projects of national and the domain of stock stabilization, river bank stabilization, ground improvement and disaster mitigation projects. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the the nice introduction and uh, okay yeah thank you sir for the uh, for the uh, nice opportunity and the introduction uh, sir before I am starting I would like to know a little about the participants also because you know slope stability is a subject which can which is from starting from the basic up to a very deep. Uh, subject so i would like to know that uh, the participants uh, uh, it's their background or all of them are students and faculties no students madam only faculty and faculties. practice engineers yeah fine so fine so uh, i i can uh, really understand that it's so it's i don't have to go to that much basics i can go to the the little uh, higher level right so i am uh, sharing my presentation Uh, sir, is it visible? Yes, yes, madam. Okay. So the topic uh, which is selected for today's session is green sustainable solutions for slope stability. So slope stability is one of the the fundamental uh, aspects uh, which is tackled through the various 
geotechnical uh, engineering solutions uh, in conjunction with the, the other branches of civil engineering and uh, the the when we talk about the green sustainable solutions uh, we have to think about uh, what do you mean by sustainability and what do you mean by green solution uh, so we'll come to that uh, while we are going through the 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 solutions of slope stability so the solutions of slope stability when you uh, look into the different uh, different guidelines our reference books so we can see the the different types of solutions are suggested uh, this is a listing of the 14 types of slope stability solutions it definitely depends on site to site each site we cannot generalize each site instead of 14 we can write 140 type of uh, solutions however the major the most popular which is starting from the old conventional methods up to the new advanced methods it is uh, listed here and not covering everything this i have taken from one of the the guidelines slope guideline which i am currently working it is already it got approved from the highway standards and uh, 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 the HSS uh, and it may be going to the council and it may get uh, printed also. So uh, the the different slope stability solutions are avoiding problem itself. <laughs> what do you mean by avoiding problem? The avoiding problem is if a, a particular infrastructure, if that is causing a lot of uh, slope instabilities, uh, for example, opening a new railway, or a airport or a highway and it involves a lot of cutting and uh, filling and the the cutting when we are uh, uh, doing the cutting or when we are widening by doing some filling if that is causing a lot of instability slope instabilities and if we have to solve the problem the expenditure is too high so then it may be it may be uh, requiring to reconsider the, the alignment itself, whether the alignment selector is right. This much money, whether it can be spent for just uh, on slopes. So the alignment changing may be considered as one of the, the solution. Second is using lightweight materials. So if we are constructing uh, any type of infrastructure say a road embankment especially in very uh, seismically high area or where a uh, lot of uh, movements can happen a lot of movements can happen by say by any type of lateral forces uh, like waves winds currents so in those cases it may be sometimes not in every case but in few cases, it may be advantageous to do the construction using lightweight materials. Especially this is uh, more uh, uh, useful when we go for seismic, uh, uh, high seismic areas. The reason is the seismic forces will be depending on the, the, the mass. And if the construction is with the lightweight materials, the mass will be reducing then the forces will also get reduced modification of slope geometry the age-old method in our uh, uh, hilly regions it is going for a modification of slope geometry provide a lot of benches beams and make a very gentle slope but nowadays the hilly areas will be having a lot of restrictions we will not be able to cut and make a very gentle slope. So a lot of uh, the hill cutting will be involved if you are going for modification of slope geometry. So in every, every place, that may not be possible. Then fourth one, in fact, if the, the listing is done in the, the order of the order of the, 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 uh, the main cause then drainage will come as the first one 
rather than avoiding the problem. So the fourth one is providing the proper drainage measures. Many of the slope instabilities, especially where landslides, rock falls and all happens, their drainage will be the, the main solution and surface and subsurface measures both can bring slope stability. Next, again, erosion control measures. Okay, many times the slope stability problems in hilly areas, it may not be that much, uh, it may not be starting with the uh, deep instability problem. It starts with uh, just a superficial problem, erosion control. If that time we can attend it, then it may get controlled. But if we are just uh, uh, ignoring that problem, then it can get aggravated it can be a progressive erosion and it will end with the deep instabilities. Then sixth, wherever uh, the space is less and we have to have a, a, a retention, we can go for rigid walls. So that is like stone masonry, RCC wall, buttress, breast, breast walls, toe, toe walls. So all these are coming under that category, all type of retention walls. but I'm categorizing it as rigid walls and flexible walls. So the rigid walls, all these RCC, stone masonry in uh, cement mortar, everything comes under that category. Then riverside protection works. So uh, the slopes may not be only in the, in the hilly places. It can be in uh, river banks, coastal slopes. They are also slope stability. The civil engineer need to attend. So riverside protection works there, apart from the normal forces, whatever we are considering, the forces, we may have to consider the hydraulic forces and more the hydraulic stability against uh, scoring, silting, and uh, the bank erosion. Then use of flexible systems, okay? Flexible systems like uh, gabion walls, reinforced soil structures, composite systems so these are the the gabions are something which are called wire crates which was which is not a new term for india we were having many years before itself our uh, hilly terrains they were using this type of uh, baskets filled with the stones and uh, the the nowadays so many advanced versions are there mechanically woven steel gabion, which is uh, uh, coated with the uh, advanced coating, advanced polymer coating. So the steel is good in giving the strength, shape, rigidity, and the polymer is good in giving the durability. Steel is having only one problem, that is the corrosion. So if the corrosion is protected using polymer or plastic, which is having very high uh, durability because the the polymer products will not it, it will not be having any type of degradation easily except if it is uh, uh, undergoing very high temperature and uh, very uh, differential uh, type of conditions so this the modern this type of uh, gabions that can be used as the building blocks for retaining walls. So those are gabion walls. So that is one of our uh, uh, main subtopic. So we will see that. Next is reinforced soil structure. This also I want to elaborate today because reinforced soil structures is, a, is nowadays a popular technology. Uh, most of you might be aware of it. So the reinforced soil structures mostly uh, it is being used in bridge approaches and all. Instead of going for RCC retaining wall, we can have the reinforcement going inside the soil and it can have a very good fascia. And this fascia can be co again concrete panel, uh, the segmental block, segmental concrete block. It can be again gabion, like it can be a, just a box filled with the stones. It can be vegetated fascia. It can be the vegetation uh, can be developed at the fascia and that will protect the erosion. So then there can be composite systems where reinforced soil structures and gabion walls can be combined. Okay? 
Then the ninth, the solution type, it is improving the internal resistance of strata. Okay. So six, seven, eight, where we were talking about the different types of uh, retention system, uh, where external materials are bringing, but the ninth is nailing, anchoring, grouting, and micropiling, where internally we are increasing the strength of the strata. So uh, these are all, whatever, the eighth one and ninth one, all these can be called as the flexible systems if we are not bringing a, a rigidity there. If for nailing, anchoring, and all, if we are again giving a concrete fascia completely, then yeah. it will not be a flexible system. If you are going with a short creating, it will not be a, 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 a green solution or a flexible system. But if you are doing the nailing and then we are providing a vegetated fascia, maybe a weld mesh or a woven mesh, we may be providing a different to get a shape and alignment. But if we can bring vegetation there, that is a green solution. So we will see that. Then the 10th one, use of rockfall mitigation systems. So what is rockfall mitigation? So in many of our hilly terrains, when we talk about the landslide, every landslide will be different from the other based on the type of the, the movement, whether it is sliding, whether it is falling, the type of masses which are in motion, the the from what height it is moving it will be different so rockfall is one type of landslide which can have uh, different types of solution based on the mass of the rock the the height from which which it is getting detached and the type of movement it will be having so the main classification of this type of rockfall mitigation systems are protection if it is protecting only it is not preventing just protecting only we will tell that it is a protection type of reinforce uh, sorry rockfall mitigation system if it is completely preventing the rock detachment itself it those are prevention measures then retention measures sometimes retaining walls or some type of retention of the rocks in the place of detachment it is not stopping the detachment it is detaching but it is not allowing the rock to fall so that is retention type of rockfall mitigation measures then warning measures in some places we may have to combine the warning with the, all the measures what we talk protection or prevention or retention so they, there is a warning also so that may be avoiding a number of accidents so those are called warning measures. Then another uh, way of the slope uh, instability is how we can cross is cut and cover precast concrete tunnels. So especially in the, the hilly terrains where a lot of instabilities are there. Nowadays, uh, the, the, uh, especially in the Himalayan zone, uh, this is taken as one of the slope stability method. Next is use of emergency measures and monsoon protection works. Why it is to be told? It is also again some retention, some linings or something. But emergency measures, when it is in the implementer's point of view, emergency measures should be a separate category because in the emergency, you don't have, we don't have, not you, we don't have the time to plan or making detailing or working drawings or anything. We may have to use it the way it comes to us okay so for that we may have to have the stock it can be temporary structures or it can be permanent structures if it is a temporary structures for example gunny bags if a flood happens the riverbank slope that is also a slope right if it is slipping away if you are dumping the gunny bags very quickly it can stop but that gunny bags should be available at that time when uh, uh, those type of a situation happens. Same for the landslide area, a slope is suddenly collapsing. If we can uh, uh, bring some gravity weights there some way and started dumping it in the passive side, that may stop there. There are uh, other uh, more durable measures also 
is there which is the different types of god uh, guidelines are uh, recommending for that uh, one uh, guideline which uh, i was involved in the the drafting that is guidelines on uh, disaster mitigation for highway engineers irc sp 1132018 there one uh, one or two chapters are exclusively for this type of emergency measures which will give us the idea that for a slope stability uh, how many steps are to be taken for from the authorities to may, uh, become ready for such type of uh, slope stability measures then instrumentation and monitoring so when we feel that a slope may become unstable and we need to know that how much the extent need to be protected maybe it is having so much very big coverage is there but that much the budget is not uh, permitting for that or the accessibility is so critical so in that case we have to fix that where the exact problem is there that need to be identified and that need to be treated so in that case the instrumentation and monitoring can help us to fix the problem uh, to a specific area and then it will uh, help us to do the solution then uh, repair rehabilitation and maintenance why this this is being taken as a solution because many times small repairing work at the right time will prevent the major instabilities uh, uh, from uh, my 2024 years of experience in uh, with the slopes uh, many times i have seen that if any problem triggers at that time if we can attend it then definitely that may be within control within a small time it can be in control and even without making any extra money but the attention need to be there attention need to be there and but if you are not attending that can just uh, aggravate and uh, uh, it may have to uh, it may have to uh, lead very disastrous situations where huge money the resources and efforts has to be uh, has to be made and then also it may not come to the original situation so there is a lot of importance for uh, for monitoring and the repairing at the right time so general categorization as per the mechanism whatever we have seen as i told you that we cannot just uh, uh, limit the list as per the situation the different types of uh, the solutions may have to be selected by the, the 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 consultant or the engineer or the 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 implementer involved in the in the slope instabilities so if we are categorizing the all the different types of solutions uh, the first is avoid or eliminate the problem itself like facility relocation infrastructure relocate it second complete removal of slides whatever the slide has happened just remove it and make it gentle okay so if there is a control on the the nearby area the places and all we can go for it another is go for bridging or tunneling instead of working on all the slopes just uh, let the the uh, unstable portion get covered by going for a bridge or tunnel so that is the first category of solution the second category of the solution which uh, we have seen in the uh, the item number 6789 where increase the resisting forces by retaining structures or reinforced soil slopes and reinforced soil walls kneeling and anchors micro piles surface slope protection all these will come in the category of resisting forces we are increasing the third is the reduce the driving forces by unloading so in some cases uh, if a hill slope if we have to increase the resisting forces we may have to go to the valley side and construct a retaining structure or in the top of the hill slope itself we have to place some retaining structures or or uh, some micro piling or maybe uh, some nails or anchors but the situation is like that we we can we cannot do that because of certain reason okay widening to the valley side it may not be possible at all 
because it is a very steep valley if we start uh, uh, going and uh, doing a retaining wall it, it has to be like a kutabina very very high retaining wall may have to be placed nailing and anchoring if we are seeing that it may not work uh, in that particular type of strata that will not get gain any shear strength by providing nailing if in those type of cases maybe we may have to think about instead of thinking about increasing the resisting forces we have to think about reducing the driving forces and uh, one more reducing the driving forces by drainage system as i told earlier the surface and subsurface drainage will be having a lot of value in most of the slope stability problems especially where landslides are happening so the uh, surface drainage and subsurface drainage measures will be uh, in almost all slope stability solutions in practical field one of this or both of this will be acting as a a, a main solution or a complementary solution so that is why i am circling there so among all the different solutions maybe the drainage also may have to be given as a additional measure so now let us look at the the retaining structures okay so many types of retaining structures are there rigid structures and flexible structures so let us uh, look at the the uh, rigid structures so rigid structures yeah it can be a tow wall maybe a a, uh, a um, rr masonry wall or it can be a pile wall or caissons at the top of the slope uh, or a cantilever uh, rcc retaining wall uh, so so uh, we can go for the different types of retaining walls how are we selecting uh, the type of retaining wall anyone anyone from the participants how we select the type of the retaining walls uh, maybe in a hill road or maybe in a hill infrastructure uh, i will tell the answer because i am sure that all of you know that uh, if you are if you are going for uh, the different types of uh, uh, guidelines or uh, textbooks and all the selection criteria is not just because of one parameter only okay so that is why most of you were uh, silent so this is very basic information and it it doesn't uh, depend on just one parameter the type of uh, the retaining wall it depends on number of parameters like the height to be protected the base width or the space available for excavation then uh, the space available for uh, uh, the any anchoring or any trenching uh, then uh, the the slope of the 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 uh, uh, the stretch which need to be protected the type of strata whether it is soil or rock uh, the accessibility to construct that also we can uh, design uh, and make the detailing but the accessibility to constraint that also is one of the major factor which is influencing the 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 selection and i am adding one more okay in fact two more okay so as i am working uh, in uh, an environment where a lot of importance is given for environmental friendly solutions uh, environmental friendly solution when we are talking it is not about just bringing a lot of vegetation definitely that is one of the aspects of eco friendliness but as you know that the eco friendliness is not only about bringing a lot of vegetation and trees and plantation and all uh, so like that is also having huge uh, huge importance it's about the reducing the the usage of natural resources reducing the the carbon emission the uh, the reducing the the fuel consumption so all these will be coming together as the green solutions okay it again includes wherever 
we are uh, disturbing the, the the strata when we can optimize okay so if we are not optimizing a solution and we are going for huge cutting and filling so that is definitely a crime so uh, apart from all the other criteria like space and height and the type of strata and the availability of the construction material or accessibility of the site, the two more criteria which need to be incorporated in uh, every textbook as well as every every caudal guideline is the the how it can be a, a green solution and uh, how it can be a flexible solution. Okay. So why, why we want flexibility? The flexibility is uh, uh, something where a structure can accommodate more forces, more movements. And why it is important? Because we want sustainable structures. We don't want the structures getting collapsed in the first shaking because our uh, mother earth is subjected to more and more calamities unfortunately we can see that every year every year we are hearing some calamity in some part of the country and it's i don't think it is just because of the uh, the the uh, the communication systems uh, became uh, uh, quite smart uh, it, it is also a factor nowadays we know any any place of the globe anything happens immediately within no time it will come in our uh, the smartphone or in the computer that is a fact so we were not knowing the calamities earlier this much fast now we know immediately but that is that only is not the criteria if you are going back to the history and the disasters and uh, the slope instabilities which has happened the whether it is flood prone or whether it is seismic originated or because of some other reasons the the this type of slope instabilities whatever we are hearing those are those were happening once in a say five years or ten years here and there but now every month soon we come to know that very very um, difficult and challenging type of slope instabilities are happening and if uh, the such type of uh, big instabilities are happening then the solutions whatever we are adopting that may will be that will be subjected to the the uh, such heavy movements or heavy forces every year or every alternate year and this if the structures are not having the ability to sustain then definitely it has to be ended with the, a number of repetitions, the, the construction. And the, the, uh, the uh, government has to spend, instead of the, the new uh, creative or constructive activities, the, the entire infrastructure fund will go for just uh, repair and uh, maintenance so the sustainability is something when we are designing the civil engineer is designing or a geotechnical engineer is designing the sustainability should be a part of the the design we call it as when we we design we will call it as strength criteria and uh, the uh, the uh, serviceability criteria but many times in the actual design in the field uh, unfortunately the serviceability criteria will be ignored but it is really very very important and we will see that uh, how with uh, some uh, simple type of uh, uh, structures uh, complex geotechnical problems may be solved with the, uh, the concept of the green and sustainable solutions so we are, we are going to flexible gabion gravity walls Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, the the gabions uh, they are simple boxes which can be filled with the stones, and these boxes are made of what? These boxes are made of steel wire mesh. What type of steel wire mesh? 
it is made of woven steel wire mesh woven steel wire mesh and the woven steel wire mesh will be having uh, quite good flexibility okay so i am talking about certain terms which are associated with the this type of uh, material the gabion material they will be flexible they will be made of woven steel material uh, the woven steel material should have good tensile strength it should have good elongation also so it, the tensile strength of the wire will give overall strength for the the entire gabion and at the same time the wire will be having certain elongation and this elongation is giving the flexibility okay so let us look at this uh, box the box is made of steel wire mesh the box will be having of course like other boxes it will be having the the different uh, sides okay usually for the gabion box we call it as panels so there is a top panel there is a bottom panel then there are side panels and intermediate panels okay this intermediate panels are called diaphragms why the intermediate panels are required when we are filling this gabion box with the stones okay we can fill it with the stones so uh, then the the once the stones are filled the outer mesh panel this is the outer mesh panel okay that may be having a tendency to get bulged so this partition or diaphragms will be preventing that tendency to bulge okay and these boxes they can be connected with each other in the sideways and the the it can be connected to the gabion below and gabion above okay so the entire structure will be acting as a monolithic structure okay so this is different from the handmade type of gabions which were popular in india for quite a long time so this type of gabions this mechanically woven gabions which i am talking about that became popular in india from say from uh, 1997 onwards was a factory has established a very huge project has come in one of our border countries nepal okay so in the nepal they have they had to construct a very very uh, long highway and uh, they found that nepal is a himalayan country there the seismicity is very high so if they are constructing the entire structures the for the uh, using the concrete as well as masonry they understood that the a very high seismic event is coming this all will get uh, disturbed so they thought of uh, going for something which can withstand the moments so then they found out that they can go for a, a lot of gabion structures which will not get disturbed by seismicity or floods or other other type of forces which will create a sudden collapse okay uh, so they have established uh, that a, a a factory in uh, indo nepal border thinking that the india also can be a can be a market for this type of uh, the product if the project is coming successful right so when we are launching anyone is launching a new uh, engineering product in a market the first structure should be a success if the first structure is success then a number of people will be following it uh, so it's important it's very important with the old researches and all uh, technical explanation the first structure should be a successful most of the time the first structure will call it as a pilot project and many times the client and the contractor and the consultants will be ready to do the pilot projects only as a as a small project and then evaluating it will be seen that whether that can be taken as a established type of construction and then the next uh, say 3 or 4 years a number of such type of 
small projects may be constructed and then usually the practice in indian road congress or highway department and even for the the railway department once we are seeing that a new type of technological uh, advance or a material is found as successful in one or or few more applications then a state of art can be released okay a state of art report can be released and with the state of art report and the the structure again closing some 10 years then a guideline can be formed based on the performance of that uh, performance of that structure and then again going another 5 years the guideline is quite uh, becoming a blueprint for many projects and all the projects are successful then it can be coming as a code for the the country so this is the way the evolution happens when a a particular uh, product is launched in a market and uh, the within uh, say 15 to 20 years the market will become mature the there will be a lot of case studies which are successfully done in different situation a state of art report already established a guideline is established a code of practice is also established so for the gabian's case also when i am telling that this is the tensile strength this is the elongation this is it and all you may ask that from where this is coming so it's from the practice as well as from the 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 initial state of art reports whichever is published in india the first state of art report where gabian was mentioned is the hillrod manual hillrod manual irc sp 48 1998 there all what is mentioned here is not there it's about some small photographs a small description after that after almost uh, uh, 12 years the first uh, guideline has been published by indian road congress they have published irc sp uh, 56 it is the use of gabians and its related products in uh, the erosion control and retaining walls after 2 years the a code is published by indian standard is 16014 so by that time all these terminologies are established the tensile strength is defined for the wire mesh as 350 to 550 newton per mm squared as per uh, Uh, is uh, 280 then elongation should not be less than 10 percentage the mesh wear elongation should not be less than 10 percentage coating the coating whether uh, it is a galvanization or whether it is a polymer coating uh, the uh, the coating has to protect the the steel wire mesh so if it is a galvanization the galvanization standard is is 4826 but the most important this is all about the steel wire mesh and uh, how its uh, sustainability will be defined there but the more importantly the boulders should be good uh, what should be the the characteristics of the boulders which can be filled in a gabion wall so the boulders can be any boulders which we are using in normal stone masonry whatever in rr masonry what we are using that can be used we don't have to have the tension of that but there are certain specifications for that its uh, minimum size and maximum size usually it will be 1.5 to 2.5 times of the gabion mesh opening okay so now let me come to the point of the mesh what do you mean by mesh so the the gabions are made by mechanically woven gabions are made by steel woven wire mesh and this mesh is normally it will be a hexagonal shape okay uh, it may not be visible to you uh, but i think that the coming slide it is showing uh, so let me go to a slide where the yeah maybe here it is visible more you can see the meshes and these meshes definitely uh, is having a standard size usually the mesh size will be uh, the the uh, 
in the cross direction it will be 100 mm the most popular mesh what we are using in india it's uh, in the cross direction it will be 100 mm and the the longitudinal direction it will be 150 mm okay and now coming to the point of what type of stone size should be used when we are filling these gabion boxes so the stone sizes what is recommended it is 1.5 times to 2.5 times the mesh size okay so otherwise the the stone will come out from the mesh then another very important uh, condition for good stones or the selection of the stones los angeles value should not be more than 45 so this also is a characteristics for the the gabion then a, normally for a gabion wall we have to provide a filter behind the gabion wall and the filter has the the we can go for gravel filter but we are talking now about the the sustainable and the green solution so uh, the nowadays in most of the indian states there is a serious problem of uh, the quarrying of stones so to get our uh, aggregate filter it's really challenging in many places so in those places we can go for a geosynthetic filter it is uh, nowadays it is not a very costly affair so many manufacturers are there in the india so they can provide that and this geotextile filter that can act as a filter and a separator so when we are instead of giving the aggregate filter if we are giving a geotextile filter like this the first of all the the erection the construction will be very fast second it will it is a factory made product so the quality will be perfect and the third there is a lot of cost effectiveness if we are using a geosynthetic filter okay so one more is the uh, is not a part of the the gabion wall but still that is having a lot of influence in the design that is the backfill soil okay especially the soil very near to the gabion because the forces which is coming on the gabion that is getting proportion to the interface friction which is developed between the gabion even if a geosynthetic inclusion is there it is mainly between the gabions and the backfill soil so if the backfill soil is a a, um, a frictional soil that will be having higher resistance if it is a non-frictional soil definitely that will not be um, having that much resistance so the effect will be we have to go for a bulky section so now uh, what are the what are the contributing characteristics of these type of i'm i just introduced simple gabion so what are the, the contributing characteristics of these gabions to make it a, a a green sustainable solution how can i claim that these boxes steel wire mesh boxes will be a will be uh, giving a green sustainable solution so the first of all it is a it is completely if it is done as a a proper way a mechanically woven gabion which is connected with the the adjacent gabions uh, by using the the lacing wires okay it will become a complete monolithic structure right so what is the advantage of going for monolithic structure so when we are going for monolithic structure the individual blocks individual dimensions can be minimized for example when we are providing a a, a uh, say a concrete lining or for a stone pitching to make a riverbank slope uh, stable the stone as per the different codes or guidelines the stone has to have very huge weight okay very huge weight but if we are going for a gabion we can make the the thickness of that uh, the lining 
25 percentage so suppose if we want to if we have if it is designed and if you are seeing the the protection or the lining protection of a riverbank slope one meter thickness lining is required but if i am placing a monolithic lining i can reduce it by to almost 75 percent expenditure will go for the the stones it will reduce only to 25 percentage one by fourth of course then uh, we have to spend for buying gabions or buying the related products but it will get reduced the second is the most important this is the flexibility the flexibility is uh, uh, the ability for the excuse me yeah this type of structures the the flexibility will help to distribute the stresses and strains in a acceptable limits Uh, sir, uh, uh, anyone is speaking anything? No, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. I am. I am uh, hearing some disturbance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, I was talking about the flexibility. So these structures are because of its uh, elongation. The basic wire is we are allowing a certain uh, percentage of elongation, so it will be having the flexibility. So it can absorb the strains and stresses to a greater extent. So it's not like that it can go without any limit, but it can take to a greater extent. So the normal type of retaining structures, we will tell that the general settlement should be limited to 40 mm. The differential settlement should be limited to 25 mm. But for the Gabian type of structures, the flexible structures, not only for Gabian structures, even other type of flexible structures, the limit can go up to 200 in some cases 300 mm some cases even 500 mm so can we imagine that 500 mm that is half a meter a structure is moving vertically or horizontally and still it is standing safe and it is doing its function only maybe if it is a lateral deformation happens big way okay 300 mm or 400 mm it will be aesthetically it may be creating a uh, creating an issue okay but that doesn't mean that all these flexible structures will be always moving. That will happen only if uh, the, the design conditions are exceeding. But that is a big comfort and big certainty is coming for the designer and installer in an area where a lot of uncertain forces can happen. Okay, So another major uh, uh, advantage of going for this type of systems these systems are free draining. It will not uh, allow the pore water pressure to develop. So most of the time, the pore water will be causing the huge forces. In a hydrostatic forces, if you are when we are applying our uh, the the lateral earth pressure equations, simple k gamma h, and the forces and overtaining moment, everywhere if the soil force and the water force is comparing the water will be almost three times or more than that the the force it is exerting compared to the soil so if we are giving free draining structures where the water is not getting prevented then definitely that will be a big jump for the optimization because we can reduce the section drastically compared to a, a, a uh, structure which is not allowing the 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 drainage okay uh, one more advantage is the this type of structures requires minimum foundation uh, requirements so usually we will design for the the foundation bearing pressures we will find out p max and p minimum right w by b into one plus six c e by b w by b into 1 minus 6 e by b we will find out for retaining wall even if it is a rcc uh, retaining wall or a dam everywhere will go like that but in this case uh, we don't have to worry about the tension at the base so the entire base will we can it can become effective without increasing the base width so much 
The reason is the bearing capacity when we are calculating whether it is Tresaghi or Grinch Hansen or the Mayerhoff, the bearing capacity equations we will apply the factor of safety as uh, three, the settlement criteria and uh, the shear criteria. But the settlement, as this type of structures can go for higher uh, settlement, the settlement criteria is not becoming that much critical, and the courts are permitting a factor of safety. Uh, which is 1.5. Whereas the usually to find out the safe bearing capacity, we have to go for three. Uh, so in this way also, the depth of excavation as well as the width of excavation can be minimized in this case of the flexible uh, structures. So I already talked about the permeability, especially this is very, uh, very uh, striking feature in the case of uh, uh, river training structures in a river front structure, if this slope need to be protected, what is given here? It is a erosion control and a gibbing wall. And uh, one more aspect is when we are inserting, if suppose if you are going for a, a RCC retaining structure, we are creating a, a complete barrier between the different types of uh, the, the uh, ecological components, whether it is phytoplankton, zooplankton, the, the different types of uh, the plants, uh the 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 fishes so we create a complete barrier here whereas this type of a structure which is having a lot of voids it will be having a lot of voids 30 to 40 percentage voids that can allow the free movement of uh the air the water as well as uh, definitely we, we don't want erosion we will prevent it but the water and the air can freely move and the aquatic species also can move so which is creating a very a well balanced situation and if we go to a, a river uh, bank which is protected and if we are watching and comparing we will definitely feel this difference one more is definitely it is uh, it is a contractor's concern more than a, a clients or consultants it is easy to uh, and uh, simple to construct but the the uh, most important part is the speed with which it can uh, construct it. Most of the structures, I am remembering that when uh, we launched any of the these type of flexible structures, now we are talking about gabions, but any of these structures, mostly, as I mentioned before, it will start with a pilot project. And when the contractor is seeing and the client is seeing that the speed of construction is good, even if it is already specified, the tender is paid, nothing can be changed. So still, the, there will be a combined effort from the client as well as the contractor. If the work is to be extended or an emergency situation will be coming, they will go for something which can be done more efficiently. So many of these uh, the, the, uh, the case studies, which I am familiar with, uh, for this type of structures that has happened because of the efficient or speedy construction. So the durability I was uh, uh, speaking about the the uh, this type of structures can uh, take very high level of settlements and it's uh, uh, even its allowable bearing pressure is much more than the the rigid structures. But one more aspect is giving its durability the the this aspect is vegetation can take its roots easily through this type of structures if in a rigid structure if a if a tree is going through that or if a vegetation is coming through that it will crack we have to either cut the tree or we have to we have to think that let the structure get cracked but this type of structures when the trees or the vegetations are going through that it will get more and more stabilized so the there is a, a eco-friendliness we can talk then versatility this can be constructed in uh, most of the places it doesn't uh, require very special preparation or anything very deep uh, foundation a lot of um, uh, uh, the skilled uh, laborers are not required the skilled supervisors maybe one person is required and uh, if aesthetics need to be uh, need to be taken care we can have with the 10 numbers of semi-skilled and unskilled laborers we can have 
one uh, good mason then definitely as unskilled and uh, less skilled laborers can be used it is a very socially uh, friendly approach can be there uh, when we are going and constructing a, a structure in a remote village or a remote place we can make the the local people a part of the construction which is really upgrading the 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 quality of life of the local people there so uh, this is what i said the vegetation can grow through that and this type of a situation if this type of a, a root is going through a rigid construction that will completely collapse the structure and where this will really uh, strengthen and uh, stabilize the structure and when the time passes the stability will be increasing only so for the analysis of the structure it is like the normal gravity walls how we are uh, uh, analyzing the uh, the sliding overturning the foundation bearing pressures and the overall uh, slip circle analysis these are the the checks which have to be done for a a, 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 a given structure and what are the factor of safety the factor of safety are defined by uh, the irc sp 1162018 a, a complete uh, design guidelines are uh, published by indian road congress uh, the name is guidelines for design and installation of the given structures so the the different factor of safety are uh, defined uh, for the the sliding it is uh, 1.5 for static condition and for seismic condition 1.3 overturning it is uh, for static condition it is 2 and 1.5 for the seismic condition and uh, uh, for overall slip circle uh, 1.3 for static condition and for the seismic condition it is 1.1 uh, i talked about uh, the river bank protection suppose we are giving a, a river bank slope and uh, even if we are providing a gabion retaining wall uh, then the top portion of the the gabion need to be protected whether it is gabion or whether it is a rigid structure or whether it is a rcc whatever it is the the we may have to protect the tow side especially the slope is subjected to the the forces from the river water flow so we can go for simple stone dumping okay when we go for stone dumping the 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 thickness of the lining will be too high it may be ranging from 1 meter to 2 meter but if you are going for a gabion mattress uh, definitely the whatever we are seeing 1 meter to 2 meter that will get reduced to 0.3 to 0.45 meter so a drastic reduction in the usage of stones will come of course of course we have to pay additionally for the mattress and gabions which i talked but the the natural material consumption will get reduced and uh, we are getting a complete monolithic structure so this is another type of new technology material this is actually not a steel gabion or a mattress this is a geo textile foam mattress so it's like our cloth geo textile cloth that can be uh, tailored like a mattress and the concrete can be pumped into it so i cannot tell it as a pure green solution it is a i will say that it is a sustainable solution because of so many reasons which we, i may not be able to means cover that topic because it is a big topic but that is also compared to a normal rigid type of solution this is also having a lot of advantages okay i'm little skipping here okay so uh, a big advantage when we are going for this type of a, a steel wire mesh mattress okay when we are using the the gabion boxes with the less thickness in the form of a mattress we will call it as a rivet mattress and this rivet mattress thickness will be usually varying from 150 mm to uh, 300 mm okay so indian standards bureau of indian standard also is agreeing for this thicknesses which is originally came from the astm 975 because that was the first comprehensive code which has come in the world which is giving the standard thicknesses sizes 
uh, for the different types of uh, the gabions and mattresses. Now, Indian standard, now we don't have to go for American standard or uh, EN and all. We are having our own Indian standard with the terminologies, the testing method, the, the installation method, everything as per the local conditions, as per the Indian conditions that is checked by our panel of experts and adopted what is most suitable for the Indian conditions. So we can see that uh, this is a, a structure uh, which is in uh, Mahanadi Orissa. Uh, in fact, we are seeing only 10 percentage of the, the slope protection. The, uh, the major part of it underwater. Okay. So the, the bed and bank protection for Mahanadi River, which is completely disturbed by the cyclone of, uh, I think, 2001 or 2002. And this uh protection work is the first dpr that is formulated in uh say in uh, that the same time 2001 2002 and this is implemented in 2004 2004 so the main uh the challenge was how the same mattress will be placed under water okay so when you are knowing about the depth of water here you will understand the challenge i am speaking it is about 20 meter so imagine that this type of a mattress need to be placed 20 meter down against buoyancy forces and against all the flow velocity okay so how it was being done but up to that time up to this 2003 in india nobody has lifted a a Gabian mattress and placed under water. So this was the first time. So it was the mattress was braced in a better way. A Gabian or mattress will be usually it will be braced internally with the number of connecting wires, which will be made in the factory in a ready-made way. Everything you will be getting. But in where we have to place it under water, we have to add more bracings. Okay, and then using a, a lifting mechanism, you have to lift it and then it should be placed underwater. And in this case, there were a lot of accessibility issues were there. So a wharf is being used from a wharf, from there a, 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 a crane, the lifting crane was placed on the, the in this wharf and through that, it was lifted and placed okay so this is a completed structure and uh, this is working the last uh, 20 years and the design now the design when i am talking about that the two meter thickness of the stones stone lining can be replaced by just 300 mm or 500 mm the gabion mattress you may ask that what is the design basis so the design basis is there are three criteria. One is tractive shear force criteria. Second is velocity criteria. The third is the deformation criteria. So the tractive shear force criteria is it is uh, uh, in fact the check should be the checking should be against the erosive forces uh, which are satisfied then the actual shear stress generated by the flow at each section point in contact with the flowing water, it must be lower than the maximum allowable shear stress on the water surface. So it is a check for the erosive forces. When, when the, the resistance offered by this lining, if it is greater than the erosive forces, then it, the, the, it is safe against tractive shear force. Then second is the, whether the velocity is enough to move the lining or move the 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 uh, the stones in the lining. Okay, so uh, you then the third is the deformation. How much the lining as such will move? Uh, how much the stones will move? Okay, so these criteria are explained also in IRC SP one one six two zero one eight. Otherwise, there is a, a very beautiful code is there, HEC23. If uh, uh, you can Google it and uh, find out, 
uh, in all these the guidelines are there how these can be designed so this is the irc sp 1162018 the caudal references for the the gabion wall and it is covering the design for the mattresses also okay uh, so i want to cover one more uh, uh, topic in a, in a quick way uh, reinforced soil walls with the gabion fascia okay so the reinforced soil walls are very common most of us very well knows it and many of us must be seeing this type of uh, reinforced soil wall with the panel fascia for bridge approaches and all but i am introducing here because i want to talk about uh, the green sustainable solutions so the same reinforced soil wall can have a gabion fascia which is pre draining and which can accommodate vegetation or it can have a just a vegetated fascia where the gabions and stones are not there just vegetation or vegetation is acting as the fascia some arrangements are to be there some steel mesh woven mesh wire me uh, welded mesh some coir mat all these need to be there but it is a the vegetation is playing the main part okay so these are uh, in fact the reinforced soil structure so here it is not the completely it is made with the gabion it is actually reinforced soil structure where the a, a reinforcing element is going inside the soil and that is stabilizing and uh, acting as the the strain or stress absorbing element but the fascia is made with the the gabions okay so if i am taking an illustration it looks like this my geogrid or the reinforcing element is going inside and the gabion with an integrated tail is forming the the front fascia the upper portion the illustration is here also the geogrid is going inside the soil okay and there is a for a vegetated fascia this is acting as a as a medium that is a, a woven mesh element with the welded mesh element and with the vegetation can go through it okay so this vegetated fascia is having the 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 advantage of a green solution and its advantage is it is quite cost effective okay so you can again see a very big slope is almost a 70 meter slope where soil reinforcement system the geogrids are going inside and the front fascia is of the gabion so a number of uh, case studies so these are uh, work in um, uh, in uh, jammu and kashmir the upper one and uh, uh, lower one uh, you can see the very beautifully that is being uh, uh, packed the gabions are uh, uh, the the fascia stones are uh, really packed in a very good way so this is actually chenani nashri tunnel in uh, uh, in kashmir uh, for the its uh, tall plaza the this retaining walls are made with the reinforced soil wall with the gabion fascia this is a, a, a another national highway project uh, this is in himachal pradesh the four lining of near chow kiratpur uh, road so himachal pradesh is having a lot of landslips uh, then uh, flash floods uh, sudden collapse because the 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 uh, the virgin uh, himalayan uh, hills that is again uh, it is made of conglomerate and a lot of mud stones and clay stones during the rain rainy time this intermediate mud stones or clay stones those are leached out and sudden big movements happens and in those type of places if we go and place a rigid structures that either we have to make it uh, quite uh, uh, quite uneconomical or we may have to go for the this type of flexible structures so the ilfs the the constructors they decided to go for the flexible option because they were having the different uh, options were permitted by the the detailed project report so they have adopted the flexible solutions and almost 33 meter high slopes uh, were constructed with the very tall uh, retaining structures using reinforced soil structure with the vegetated fascia and some places with the gabion fascia this is in uh, south india it is uh, 
uh, uh, a very tall uh, reinforced soil structure. I'm not uh, supposed to share the name of this structure because there is a confidentiality agreement. But this is a structure which is supporting a, a famous airport. And uh, this is almost 88 meter high, 88 meter high reinforced slope. And the soil is lateritic soil, which is having the very peculiar behavior, especially during the monsoon. The lateritic soil, which shows very good properties, especially high cohesion and moderately good friction angle when it is in a dry state. But when the water is continuously going through it, it starts losing its cohesion and big landslips happens. So this is a, a reinforced soil structure. This is during the construction where the, the polymeric uh, reinforcements are placed. And then the, the soil will be placed over it. It will get compacted. And the, the structure uh, construction is happening in, in stages. Okay, uh, I'm uh, uh, skipping actually uh, for the the design of uh, reinforced soil structure. I will go to the references. The uh, nowadays a number of references are available. Like in the case of uh, the Gabians, for reinforced soil structure also a number of uh, uh, guidelines are available. Some guidelines are under preparation now. So IRCSP 116, IRCSP 102, MORTS specifications, BS 8006. Uh, then if we want the international specification, we can go with the FSWA NHI 10024, 10025, ENISO, European norms. If we want to know about the different types of fascias, especially the vegetated green fascia, and it's uh, where it is recommended, this is a very beautiful call, ENISO 14475. It is the execution of special geotechnical works reinforced fill. Then ASHO 2012, the LRFD uh, bridge design specifications. Again, uh, this is a, a, a very good uh, design guidelines. And the Bureau of Indian Standard is now, they are drafting a very comprehensive code which is covering the different uh, aspects and the design practices in, in uh, the different uh, type of countries like American, Australian, uh, the European, as well as the Indian standards. Whatever so far has happened, that is completely reviewed. And the most practical, the design steps are, um, uh, are uh, uh, compiled in this code. And this code is uh, almost uh, in the in the final form. And instead of showing all the the tall uh, number of guidelines and codes, one can go for a simple code, a single code, which is talking about the design, the specifications, the the construction steps, and the quality checks. So uh, uh, that is coming. <clears throat> Now, uh, I talked about the, the rock fall. So for the rock fall, uh, this is the, uh, I think the last slide I want to show. So for the rock fall mitigation, that is also we are dealing with a slope. It's only differences in the, in the a, a reinforced soil slope, we can excavate and we can uh, do uh, 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 the place the, the reinforcements, we can place the fascia, we can construct the retaining wall. But in this case, it is about the rock. And rock cutting is a very expensive and very tedious process. So uh, how we can uh, control the rock movements without go for so much rock cutting? So there are some systems which are flexible, which are sustainable, and which are means eco-friendly. So drapery system. Drapery system means you are just draping. But when we are draping, we have to think about we are dealing with the, the rock. So we cannot just drape it with uh, some jute or coir and think that it will get protected. It has to be with the strong meshes, panels, grids, and then we can make the rock to either protect it by uh, just covering it or the detachment, the force of detachment, we can work against it. Not only the mesh will be placed, but some nailing and anchoring can be given. 
and that can be surface nailing or top nailing or bottom nailing surface anchoring and uh, uh, designing the the mesh as well as the anchors and even the trenches which is provided at the top as well as the bottom for embedding the the cable anchors all these requires specific designs so that is a very deep topic uh, again uh, we will not be able to cover that but i can give you the references it's uh, there is a irc hrb 23 it is a indian road congress guideline is there which is covering all these type of reinforce sorry all these type of rockfall protection systems its design its specification everything is covered if we don't want to go with the such type of uh, steel meshes and all we can go with the earthen embankment if we can reinforce it and that can be used as a a, a, a rock fall prevention when the rock is falling in the path of it if you are placing such an embankment that will also uh, protect the structures then there are steel barriers also if this type of embankments will take a lot of space but if you can place a steel barrier uh, without covering the entire area with the mesh this barriers can also protect against uh, the rock fall okay so see this uh, the the uh, the right uh, photograph here uh, this is a structure uh, which is uh, done in uh, uh, the uttarakhand and there we can see that the meshes and anchor points that is protecting the entire uh, the rocks which are in fact weathered and which can create a lot of risky type of uh, uh, rock falls uh, the left hand side the photograph is this is uh, uh, a uh, a structure where in fact it is a reinforced soil structure which we have seen earlier with a gabion fascia but we can see a lot of anchor points also why it is because in this case we were not able to make the the geogrid or polymeric element to go so much inside but because the rock was there so we have used instead of using the geogrid or a normal steel mesh as the reinforcement here the nailing is used as the reinforcement and the gabion was used as the fascia so then uh, the we can go for uh, hydro seeding or simple coir mat or jute mat that also is a slope stabilization as i mentioned in my introductory portion many times if you are doing if you are protecting a slope with the erosion and drainage that itself will prevent the slope instabilities but in some slopes especially uh, to my surprise many of the projects which we were doing in uh, himachal we were seeing that the the vegetation will not come very easily even if the the surrounding area is quite uh, green the slope which you need to protect their vegetation was not coming easily so then we have found out that the the soil is having certain type of uh, ph which is not favorable for the vegetation growth so when we are neutralizing it by adding some type of uh, 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 the uh, uh, chemical uh, mixtures that will get neutralized and then we can convert it for a a vegetated uh, a slope which will be much more stable than a non vegetated slope so these are my last slides these are this is a case study which uh, uh, we have done in uttarakhand and what we are seeing is a a slope which was completely collapsed what was initially there that during the time of uttarakhand 2013 flood the flood has affected this slope the valley side slope and it has caused very big collapse and when uh, we have taken up this job we found that the main reason was a nearby culvert became choked if that culvert was not choked then uh, the the subsurface flows and surface flows would have gone smoothly and the the earlier structures would have stayed there but the culvert got choked that entire area became waterlogged and that has caused enormous force and this uh, that the complete slope collapsed 
so after the 2013 this uh, this uh, tender was floated i think 2016 17 and the construction has completed by uh, for this stretch by 2018 end and now we can see that the entire area is uh, covered with vegetation we will not even feel that uh, some structures are inside in fact given walls are there reinforced old structures are there nailing is there uh, and a river body is going and for the river body there are mattresses placed given walls are placed we are not able to see any of this because the the vegetation has grown through there and the a complete greenery is protecting now the these structures whatever we have placed that has become redundant the vegetation is completely protecting but that will not happen unless we are making it stable the slope is now made stable the the first monsoon second monsoon and all so that time it was able to facilitate the vegetation growth now by the time of the fourth monsoon the vegetation became so strong that the structures with the vegetation is protecting uh, the environment in a, in a nice way so i talked about uh, rockfall drapery systems the same uh, the, the same area the same stretch uh, the the hillside uh, a lot of uh, fragmented uh, rocks were there for some part of the stretch and those need to be if that is not protected the rocks will fall on the road and that can cause major accidents so but when we are providing this type of meshes and some nails definitely as i mentioned that the we have to find out the forces dynamic forces and static forces which is coming on the nails as well as the meshes and the mesh tensile strength the punching strength the nail force the nail uh, the spacing the diameter all these need to be analytically found and uh, all these will be governed by the installation requirements also okay another aspect uh which is uh, which is important for this particular project was the drainage a lot of uh, the the energy dissipation uh, 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 structures has to be provided here also what we are seeing is actually the the a drain it is a a, um, a, a concrete drain but a lot of uh, flexible structures are, are also being provided as the 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 drainage here drainage composite is provided as chimney drain the the uh, culverts uh, head walls are pro are made with the the gabions then here what you are seeing is a rock fall barrier it is a steel barrier whatever the rocks which is coming from the top that will get protected here again for the entire slope if we were going for short creeping all these trees whatever we are seeing the greenery is would not have been here but the short creep is replaced by barriers and the the most disturbed stretches some meshes steel meshes are provided which is not uh, creating any hindrance to the the aesthetic appeal of the area so you can see that the road is going here and whatever we are seeing the 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 rock surface it is very near to the the road and as i mentioned if this is not being protected properly the rock fall will happen again it has happened in 2013 14 it will happen again and that will cause a lot of uh, uh, risky type of travels and but now this area is completely being protected so this is a part of uttarakhand package 1 uh, and 2 where uh, almost 13 14 stretches got uh, protected by this type of flexible structures and the the ministry the highway ministry is now uh, repeating the same type of uh, flexible structures and the green solutions for most of this type of vulnerable solutions in uh, the himalayan states definitely it is not the same it has to be site specific designs and solutions are adopted so so green slope stability solution a slope in a landslide or especially landslide area it is like a living body uh, very much interconnected it's all connected i told you that uh, uh, that uttarakhand case study whatever we have just seen a culvert got chopped but the after effect is something which is 30 meter away a complete slope has uh, collapsed the entire structure there was a rcc wall there was a short creep Uh, short created hillside uh, protection everything has collapsed 
so it is completely interconnected like our body if uh, anywhere the the blood flow is stopped that will uh, show us a, 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 a maybe a big collapse erosion control and drainage are most basic solutions so i talked about uh, gabions reinforced soil uh, rock fall protection drapery system barriers everything a lot of products but forget about all these products if we are giving simple drainage water need a path if that can be and normally that will not cost much again erosion control at the right time so uh, uh, someone asked me recently that uh, see all these solutions looks means very 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 uh, superficial but the himalayan slides are very deep uh, I, I, as per me the is yes, himalayan slides are very deep but if the solutions were being given at the right time it would not have gone that much deep if it is deep definitely we have to go deeply deeply intervention may have to be done sometimes we used to give the the nails of so much depth 25 meter 26 meter 30 meter reinforcement up to 50 meter we have to give reinforcement within the zone the drainage very deep drainage micro piling we have to give when the when the problem goes very large we have to give big solution but many times if we can attend it at the right time for a slope stability then definitely that will uh, that will uh, give the control and the most important aspect i in fact i didn't cover because i want to talk about just flexibility and uh, the greening so the proper study from the beginning if that is there the 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 proper geological geotechnical and uh, geophysical studies are conducted in a right way and if that is being incorporated in the right manner then definitely a lot of mishaps can be avoided now i have presented the simple solution gave involves rs slope nailing with the green fascia rock fall solutions these are green solutions but it has to be done in with the proper selection proper selection and many times we may have to go for multiple solutions together and sometimes we may have to combine the conventional solutions and the advanced solutions so what is important is the precision the precision the observation and the implementation in an organized way and green solution can reduce carbon footprint significantly see whatever the solutions i talked about all these solutions are reducing the carbon footprint to the extent of 80 percentage to 160 percentage i was a part of the g3 committee uh, that is for the irc which is uh, having the subgroups for uh, working out the carbon footprint and it was a, a group of people who were sitting together and we were working out the the carbon footprint reduction and it was seen that these type of flexible solutions like uh, geosynthetics the gabions the the nailing with the flexible fascia and all these are the these are the type of uh, the civil engineering products which can uh, reduce the carbon footprint to the the greatest level compared to any other so definitely the the uh, the the today's the civil engineering uh, the uh, the academics as well as the industry the mode of practices need to be upgraded to bring more uh, green and sustainable solutions uh, for every aspect and of course to slope stability problems too thank you Any questions, sir? Ajigaru, is there any questions? Madam, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, madam, for enlightening and informative uh, talk. A lot of uh, many things you are told about the profitability. Uh, very useful for our uh, participants and uh, for us also. So, 
participants please uh, any queries uh, can ask madam yeah madam i have a question shall i ask ma'am yes sir please uh, madam gabian madam yes sir so whether it works on clay soil ma'am yeah uh, uh yes sir it is a very good question uh in fact uh, it is um, more suitable for uh, the uh, soil which is having high settlements uh, because in those type of uh, clay soils if we are going for a rigid type of construction it will be subjected to a lot of uh, settlement right and we have to go for uh, certainly we have to go for extensive ground improvement whereas gabion structures uh, many times uh, we can avoid the ground improvement and even if we need to go for ground improvement we can minimize it uh, i have a few very good case studies i can share with you sir uh, it is uh, done in uh, uh places like uh, uh in uh, pongan belt in uh, uh, the uh, river banks of uh, kerala river banks of uh, up bihar uh, then again um, uh, black cotton soil that is again uh, like clay soil very challenging so the the gabion's advantage is that it can accommodate the the settlements to a great extent the strains which are caused by the the settlement or subsidence that it can take and it is completely a monolithic structure so whatever happens there will not be a sudden collapse it will uh, it may deform but it will not cause a sudden collapse so it can protect to a, a great extent compared to the rigid structures it can work with the, the clay play even without any any ground improvement or replacement if you are placing a, over a clay say which is less than uh, phi value is only 5 degree and c value say 10 kpa in such type of a, a a clay if you are constructing a 4 meter high even wall it will settle i can tell now itself within 40 45 days it will settle at least uh, 200 mm 300 mm <laughs> okay if the the is the the consolidation properties are also bad but it will not collapse anyway it will settle together okay even if it is a differential settlement it can accommodate the differential settlement to a great extent madam now one uh, a project i am handling actually so okay. heritage structure so i have to design a gabion okay on a clay soil Okay. I am working on it actually. Almost uh, it is uh, a fourth structure. Okay. It's a rehabilitation work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am thinking to go for gabion wall design only because uh, there is no equipment mobilization is allowed there. Okay. We need to keep the heritage intact. Okay. So we, the external yeah. wall will be only uh, facing panel. okay the remaining load should be completely uh, uh, without disturbing the external facing okay edge. right so what's the thing madam okay so, sir uh, i can assist you if you can share the the some photographs cross section and all i can give some suggestions and yeah, uh, what is suitable for you you can uh, select from that definitely so presently i am thinking only gabion will be helpful yeah gabion is uh, in fact uh, uh, the recently i have uh, come across a number of cases uh, where i really felt that uh, uh, the the education on this type of uh, simple products really that will uh, uh, really contribute to a great extent for giving solutions to some some special situations and it it uh, uh, definitely will help in uh, that type of special uh, conditions thank you madam thank you uh, any other questions madam is there any mechanism to find out madam any uh, uh, miss land slides or uh, rock falls hmm. the uh, prediction is possible madam uh, and uh, text measures for that yeah right uh, sir basically the you know the landslides and rock fall happens because of uh, some forces some movements will start right 
so it may be sudden or it may be taking some time so from the beginning itself if that can be detected then uh, we can uh, understand so one uh, such type of uh, uh, measures which is being developed by kongan railway they call it as kacha daga so that is how uh, there are uh, some uh, the the uh, by uh, uh, making some arrangements in the in the vulnerable stretches when the movement happens there will be the digitally the uh, communication will go from there to the engine room as well as to the driver okay, okay so they can stop it and uh, uh, even if the train is not passing also the if the the signal is coming then the authorities can or the technicians can go to the site and they can take the measures there are a, a number of uh, sensors are getting used in uh, at present in the in the vulnerable stretches of the the uh, himalayas which is getting monitored by uh, the uh, the gsi as well as uh, 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 some of the 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 project which is already done by the ministry the instrumentation is going on there and uh, earlier the practice was you have to go there you have to go there or you have to buy the data logger you have to collect it and all but the systems are nowadays it is getting automated and a real time monitoring is happening so it means and say it is picking up it has not come to the level of uh, the uh, the developed countries like usa and all the complete prediction and all that has not come but it is uh, developing recently my organization has uh, developed a system it is called uh, hello mac <laughs> okay oh. so that is completely for uh, warning wherever a rockfall is uh, can happen uh, the a prediction will be there but we have to uh, a certain level of vulnerability has to be identified much before yes, it cannot be like that the entire himalayas we cannot uh, in, uh, include there but certain high risk areas are identified those areas within the particular circumference anything happens that can be uh, uh, predicted with that mm -hmm. and how much uh, how much uh, hazards can happen uh, that will be uh, mapped and predicted also yes, so it is it's happening this yes, man in trumala hills also sometimes uh, there will be lands that is not localized places uh, small places yes yes yeah uh, yeah many of the uh, two of the major work in india which has happened uh, uh, that is uh, uh, highly respected and uh, worshiped uh, pilgrim places one is in uh, vaishnava devi uh, uh, temple so in the hall uh, when we are traveling uh, from uh, from the foothill up to the top you can see a lot of rock wall protection barriers drapery systems it's uh, very advanced technologies are adopted the entire vaishnava devi route because there the 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 rock wall happens with a lot of reasons subsurface mm -hmm. flow surface flow geological reasons geomorphological reason everything even monkeys play a part are going you can see that in this monkeys are playing mm -hmm. on the top of the the rocks and they started uh, throwing a lot of small stones picking up the stones and throwing to the the pilgrims who are traveling but their continuous activity they act repeatedly that is causing the rock fall uh, we cannot believe that when we are seeing only we will understand that same way saptashungi that is in uh, maharashtra it's again a pilgrim place uh there also uh, rock fall happened and a lot of accidents even deaths happened okay so there also the barriers and uh, the drapery systems are provided that is done by my organizations vaishnava devi uh, some other organization did but that is also a very beautiful work now i think in andhra kanagadurga temple i think uh, the protection work is going on now the installation is going on uh, with the, the high energy absorption steel panels which can absorb a lot of energy usual rock wall protection systems it can hold uh, stones of some 60 cm only but nowadays very uh, uh, meshes which is having very high strength is there so it can go up to 3 meter stones 
three meter diameter stones can be folded and uh, the rock fold barriers steel barriers it can take up to the energy level of 12000 kilojoules so earlier it was only 5000 kilojoules in our uh, india now the type of uh, calamities happens every year so that is making us to go for uh, high, uh, high, uh, highly advanced materials which is having the the strength and uh, stiffness which is uh, 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 which is capable of holding those type of stones or holding it so it's happening and indian standards also some of the the uh, the bureau of indian standard uh, committees uh, they have uh, really taken quick decision some of the iso standards they indianized just uh, took the decision by the chairman and the team let us indianize it because we need it so is iso i think 144 uh, sorry 17745 and 17746 is covering most of the popular drapery systems in the world okay. it's giving all the the strength requirements the testing requirements uh, so it's not talking about any particular brand or anything but if that is there a a a civil engineer who is thinking uh, can really make uh, a rock wall protection systems at least the basic thing can be made yes. So I also thank you very much, Madam, for uh, accepting our uh, invitation to give this lecture. So it is very useful, Madam, with a lot of knowledge. Uh, you, are, you still have many things to say, but because of uh, lack of uh, time. time. Yes, <laughs> yes Madam. Thank you thank so you. much, Ma'am. So we are fortunate to have you on this program, actually. So we tried our level best so to encompass all topics of sustainable in nature. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. Okay. And uh, uh, it is always a pleasure to uh, come and uh, meet all of you because uh, we got some of our best engineers from uh, your college. Uh, Thank so you so much, ma'am. There is a very, you know, very special uh, relation is there, and. Uh, uh, you know, one more time, I am appreciating uh, the the organizers for uh, giving me this platform, and uh, thanks for all the participants for uh, uh, having the patient uh, listening. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. I I can share the presentation to you. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, Send me, ma'am. I will uh, distribute to the participants. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Yuvraj? So shall we close the session, sir? Yeah, so you sir. just uh, inform all the participants, so those who have registered through message, 126 members. So okay. if uh, the okay. attendance is not 80%, uh, they will not be issued any certificate by AICT. Yes, sir. That is the mandatory requirement and uh, the eligibility criteria to get the certificate is uh, share with them again. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Uh, participants, uh, thank you everyone uh, for attending.